Hello everyone and welcome to the technical deep dive of the key platform and the C Dream 4.0 model, aka Nano Banana Killer. If you just watched our demo video, you saw the incredible results this platform and this amazing new model can achieve. And in this video, we're going to pull back the curtain and explore the why and how behind the key platform. It's a synchronous nature and the unique workflow it requires. And in terms of platform, you might wonder why should we use key instead of open router like we did for Nano Banana? And it's all about price and availability. For difference between both, please make sure to check out our demo video above, which is basically the trailer for this one. And in this video, we're going to dive deeper on how to securely pre-process your API request, how to make API call using Key's unique asynchronous workflow, and finally, how to execute the job and retrieve your final image generated by CDream 4.0 model. And let's get started. The lower branch is the exact flow that we talked about in Nano Bananas video, and today we're focused on the upper one. And the biggest difference between Key and the other platforms is its asynchronous task management pattern. In a traditional setup, you send an API request and get a response back actually straight away or almost immediately. But with Key, when you submit a task like image generation, you don't get a result right away. Is that the API returns a task ID. This means you need a two-step process, which is submit a task and get a task ID, and then query the task progress using that ID until it's complete. This is why in the pink section right here, you will see so many more nodes in the workflow for Key. Another key difference is how Key handles image uploads. To work with the models, you first need to upload your base64 formatted image to the key platform. And the first three nodes in the flow today were completely reused from the Nano Banana video, so if you want to dive deeper, feel free to check it out. I'll directly jump into the base64 upload node. So to construct it, the key API actually provides a specific endpoint for this. We'll put this link down below. So if you copy the curl command from the upper right panel directly, you can go back to your flow and create an HTTP node. By importing the whole curl, almost everything would be set up by then. But a common mistake right here is to hard code your API key directly as a curl header parameter like this. This is absolutely poor practice. Instead, we use a more secure method, header authentication. So here's how it works. We'll use a generic credential type and then specify header auth for authentication. Now click on create a new credential. To fill in its name and value, you should go back to the key documentation page where you can see the format being header name is authorization. And the value needs to start with bear followed by your API key. You can get your API key directly from the key web page after you have an account. Just go to your profile dashboard, click API key in the sidebar, and you may simply copy the key. And finally, paste it after the word bear and a space, simply like this. This will be the value for your new credential. That being said, you don't need the headers parameter anymore, just delete it. By using this method, your credentials are kept separate from the node, making your workflow much more secure and reusable. And in the body parameter, the first parameter is called base64 data. This is a standard format, so don't worry about the syntax. You can just copy, uh, download the workflow from our Discord community without typing it yourself. And for the third parameter, file name, this is the trick. When uploading, it's also crucial to use a unique file name to prevent files from overriding each other. A great way to do so is to use a timestamp, down to millisecond as your file name. This is why we're capturing the current time to millisecond right here. This ensures every image you upload has a completely unique identifier. Again, don't worry too much about the syntax. Now, the next step is to construct our request using a code node. So we need to head over to the key platform again. Under the API tab, you choose create task. To find a pre-made request example, you can simply paste into the workflow. 
So just copy the selected part right here and paste it back as your request body. The only thing else you need to change are the image URLs for each image you uploaded in the previous step. You just grab its download URL and add it to the list called image URLs. This is basically what the for loop does. So that's it for the whole pre-processing step. The output will be clean list of URLs just like this one right here. In this case, you uploaded two images and you'll see there are two of them ready to go. Now let's move on to make the API call. The model API call itself is straightforward. Again, you'll need the same curl command from the key documentation. Uh, this time, just paste the whole thing back to set up the HTTP node automatically. And remember, as I said, uh, set the authentication type as generic credential type with header auth as we just set up in the preprocessing step. Similarly to open router, the body content type here is JSON for the request body. The output for this node will be that all important task ID. This ID is the key to the next step, querying the status. This is the difference. The asynchronous nature in key platform means when you submit a task, you don't get the result right away. Instead, the API returns a task ID. That's why we'll use a new HTTP node following this first node to feed it with the task ID. To construct the second node, if you head back to the key API documentation and scroll up, you'll find the query task tab. Just like before, we'll copy the curl command directly to set up our node using the header authentication in a completely identical manner. The only input for this node is the task ID because again, this node is to check on our task's progress following the first HTTP node. And the API will give us the status like generating or waiting. And here's where it gets interesting. We use a while loop to continuously check the status. The loop will keep running as long as the state is in success. If it's still generating, the result JSON field will be empty. And the loop will pause for a few seconds before trying again. Only when the status finally returns success can we move on to extract our final result. To handle this, we've added a wait node to the workflow. It checks the task status every 5 seconds, and if it's not finished yet, the node simply waits another 5 seconds and checks again. This is the critical part of the process, and it's something that, as far as I understand, you won't see on other channels that introduce key. We've built this elegant workflow to handle Key's unique asynchronous requests, ensuring you can get your images every single time without a hitch. And once the task is complete, the result JSON will contain a URL for your new image. In this edit fails node, we're simply grabbing the first URL from the list, which is why you see it denoted by zero. So that's how you get the URL string out of it. Last but not least, you can then use a final HTTP node with the get method to download the image data directly from that URL. Simple. Now check out the image. Oh, it's quite great. It looks quite realistic. The dress size is perfect for the model and the dress is consistently represented to its detail with nice lighting, shadow, and so on. I'm quite satisfied with that. And let's compare that to the one we generated with Nano Banana um, using the flow that we introduced a few weeks ago. Yeah, the output from Nano Banana here is frankly less impressive. I mean, it followed the prompt in a correct direction, but it kind of failed to deliver the same fidelity and intricate details as the CG model as we just saw. And that's it. That's the technical workflow for using Key's powerful API and the Seedream 4.0 model. While it has a few more steps than simple synchronous call, this approach gives you more control and access to the newest models faster, also in a cheaper way compared to Open Router. If you'd like to see the shorter, non-technical overview video for this deep dive but you haven't, please make sure to check it out. And for a more in-depth look at the Nano Banana Flow from the lower branch, please don't forget to watch our step-by-step -step tutorial that we released, I think, two weeks ago. 
and thanks for diving deep with us and hope you like it. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.